Hey, I'm Shawnee D. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use DaVinci Resolve. Download the free version, edit a video, upload it to YouTube in case you need to know how to do this for Tyrants Pro Whooper. Step one would be uh, download the software. If you do Blackmagic support, it's the best way to get there. Click on DaVinci Resolve. And you can download the latest one for free, at least you want the one that does not say Studio. Go through the process to install it. That should be straightforward. We'll open up. Vinci. Here's where you can make a new project. We'll start a new project. All right, that's going to bring us into DaVinci. There's a couple things you can do first is you have global DaVinci Resolve settings up here in preferences. These are going to be all the settings that apply to DaVinci, the software across all projects. Memory and GPU, especially with PCs, you may really have to do a lot of tweaks here to get it to run the right way but that's where it is. And then this will apply to all projects within DaVinci. Then you have project settings. The, so this down in the bottom right, project specific settings. So you'd have timeline resolution, frame rate. You can do proxy generation where clips are stored, a whole bunch of stuff. So DaVinci is laid out in order from left to right. So it's designed for you to go through each of these tabs in order until you go. So start here in the media pool. Um, and, well, actually, I need to go out to organize before I go in here. I'm going to always store everything in a dedicated project folder, and you just put everything in that folder. I had a couple DVR clips here. All right, so I got a couple of files in there, and you can do several things. Once you have your folder, your project folder made, where you're keeping all your assets, you can just click on those and drag them into DaVinci, and that's going to import them for you um, or you can navigate to them in this top window so this top window is like your computer's files and this bottom window is where all of your media for the project exists so i'm going to jump here navigate to that tutorial and i'm just going to drag the whole folder in it's going to ask me do i want to change my project frame rate but no i don't because i already set that's what i want in the project settings and it drags in that whole folder and all of the organization of the folder. So if you do do a complex project where you've got multiple different video clips and you've got audio or an action camera, all that stuff, but you organized it nicely in a folder, all you need to do is drag that main folder into master and it'll keep all the folder organization for you. You could go to the cut page if you want to edit like this. I'm horrible at this cut page, but if you're used to like iPhone style editing or maybe Final Cut, this may be a good you may find this more intuitive. I'm just going to go to the edit page for now. So you've got your window here with all your media. You've got your effects, um, your ability to turn those things on and off. So if I don't need to see my media, I can turn that off. If I don't need to see effects, I can turn that off. But if I just want to make a timeline, I can click on a clip and just drag it in. It's going to make a timeline for me. Uh, or I can select multiple clips, right click on them, say create a new timeline. Or I can just click, right click in the open space and create a new timeline. I like it doing it this way so I can title it. So now I do that and I can start to drop files in. So again, I could just drag a file in. It's going to drag both video and audio in. Or um, I can, if I double click on a file, I get the preview window here. And then I can choose to drag just video or just audio in. So. If you have a DVR clip that's like this one that's got that nasty buzzing audio, then you can say, I just want video, and just pull the video in. I'll bring them both in. Let's say I didn't want this uh, audio here, but anytime I click on it, I can't, uh, I can't get rid of it. If you hold Option or Alt, you can click on individual things that are linked together and then just delete it. I want to synchronize these two clips, so I'm going to find my clap point. Um, for me, command plus and minus, it should be command plus and minus, control plus and minus, and zoom in and out, or you can use this guy. I'm going to find my clap. The arrow keys move frame by frame, so I move frame to the clap, and then you can use your mouse here if you, if you have this selected where you hold your mouse on 
the region is going to give you different options. So if I hold it here, I can get a trim. I can pull that trim to the playhead, and I've made that cut. The other thing I could do is if I have my playhead here, I could select the blade tool and cut it there, or I could hit Command-B. If I was here, I could hit Command-B. Um, or what I would do in this situation is I'd want to trim to the playhead, so I'd hit Shift, left bracket. Um, so there's that clip. Now I want to line this one up so I can actually use the uh, less than equals then to nudge this one underneath. But I can't see it. So I'm going to hit D and that will disable that and I can see that the file underneath. Um, <clears throat> I'm using snapping so that means this playhead will like snap to the region. If you don't like that you can turn it off here. And now I can nudge this with the left bracket to find my clap. There we go. And I'm going to do a shift bracket to cut that D again to make them visible. And then if I don't want the space here, I can just click on that space and now I'll hit backspace and it's going to move everything in the timeline. All right, so I've got my two video clips on top of each other, but I want them to be a different size so I can see them. So click on the one you want to adjust, and you can come up here to the inspector, and you've got all your controls. So all these controls will affect this specific clip you're working on. So I can do some zoom here. So I want that one there, but I want I like those that setting worked well, so, and I want to copy that. So I can Command C or Control C. And then instead of Command V for paste, I'm going to say Option V or Alt V. And this lets me paste only specific things. So I want to just paste the zoom. I'm going to paste that. Now I've got the exact same scaling. And I can bump that one over. So now I've got my two clips side by side. Cool. Uh, let's say I don't want this part at the beginning. If I have nothing selected and I hit Command B, it's going to cut the, everything on the playhead. If I have 50 tracks here, it's going to cut everything. If I only select one, it will only cut that. So I want to cut them both. I would say like that, and then I could delete these, then hit here and delete the space. But that's a lot of steps. We're not going to do that. We're going to use Trim Mode, and if I go to Trim Mode, which is this, or the T key, then as I make that cut, or I make edits, uh, to multiple things. So I'll make edits here to all of this. I can trim and it's going to move the whole timeline to fill in the dead space. Or I could use that shift left bracket and delete this section and it will bump the whole thing to the front. So trim mode is like a magnetic thing where it fills in all the gaps and like ripples down all your edits. So then you don't have to go delete a section and then highlight everything and then move it back down to another part of the timeline. All right, and then we don't need this nonsense at the end. I'm going to shift right bracket, get all that stuff. Uh, let's say I want to title this stuff. We can go over here to the effects bin. We've got all sorts of cool effects here, but titles, we do simple text. Move your title around. Say. I don't know which one was which. Let's see. This is DJI for sure. The DJI DVR is way better than Fat Shark. Oh, sorry. If you hold Option on anything and drag it, it will copy it. So I can make as many copies as I want if I'm holding Option. So that's what I did there. I just held Option and drag it up, and then I can select it and type in another name. And then if I want to change both of these, I can make them a clip. There we go.
Uh, that's boring. So let's add some music. I use a platform called Soundstripe. <clears throat> it's good stuff. I use it for work. Dr. Delight. Cool. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to make sure I keep myself organized. I'm going to put that clip in project folder. If I want to be quick about it, I can just drag that from the folder straight over here. Good to go. I can drag that down. Uh, you can grab any of these bars and make your stuff bigger if you want to see see it a little better um, and then you can do volume just right here in the track there's a little line it's hard to see because it's all white but I don't want that quite so loud cool and then I'm gonna hit the end of the playhead I'm gonna do again shift right bracket delete all that extra now we've got my nice video Let's say we want to end it with a fade out. I'm going to grab this little tab here. I can do a fade out. Same with the music. Cool. Uh, the next tab here is Fusion. That will be if you want to do some effects and stuff. I'm going to jump to the Color tab. If you wanted to do some color, you can. All right, so we've got really basic. We got our the shadows, the dark stuff. We got the mids, the stuff in the middle, and the bright stuff, the highlights. And then offset is everything all together. And then you, you just have some general controls here. Temperature, tint, contrast, um, saturation, hue, the, these type of things. With with these controls, you can do mostly everything you would need to, to fix any, any kind of issues. Um, and then here are the scopes, and the scopes are really helpful. Sometimes it does this by default, so you click on the scopes. But the scopes at the top of the line would be things that are clipped bottom line are things that are clipped into the shadows and generally you'd want to avoid that so if you have clipping you can grab your bright stuff and you could bring it down I'm only selected on this side so you see it on that side um, I can reset just that if I want so I actually want to bring this is, this is actually interesting because I can see that the DJI DVR is so much brighter than the Fat Shark and look at you can see that there's more detail just in the waveform alone. I plan to do a whole tutorial on how to do some color grading and repair of DVR, analog DVR specifically, and that's kind of why I was doing this test. So I'm going to do just a real rough quick color to this. I always line it up with exposure, I'll do color saturation or fix, and then I'll do maybe something fancy at the end here. So an exposure, I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at the waveform to make sure I'm in good shape. Bring gamma down a touch, get a little contrast. I'm going to go here to curves and I'm going to turn high soft up a little, which will just soften this highlight clipping. I'm actually going to do low soft a little bit too. You can see it kind of fades out the really dark stuff. Well, let's max it out a bit. And then I'm going to bring my shadows back down. That's not looking very good, actually. <laughs> Let's just do more of this. And then I'm going to bring my highlights back up a bit so it's brighter. It's all right. It's a little extra, con a little extra contrast. Let's do some color. I'm going to make the highlights maybe a little cooler, a little more blue. Want my shadows to be maybe a little greeny to match. The room's really green, so let's go a little more blue than green. And then let's warm up the whole shot and the skin tones. Maybe something like that. What does it look like? I'm just having Command D to turn it on and off. So I just kind of made it a little more neutral, I guess. Call this fancy because we're going to do. Automatic dirt removal, and that removes a bunch of stuff. Like I think it actually took out the asterisk. Yeah, take out the asterisk. That's funny. Um, but the dirt removal will take out like glitches and 
scan lines and stuff. Let me see if I can find something. Like there was a there's a glitch. So I'll turn that dirt removal on, and that whole glitch is gone, which is pretty sweet. Sometimes it can get way too much, and it can take things out you don't want it to take out, but. It does a lot. Let's put a lot on there just for fun. For kicks. That's way too strong, so I'm gonna go here to the keyer window and just turn keyer down. It's kinda like making it transparent. Oh, we just got a little lot on there. It's kind of nice. All right, super simple color grade. I'm gonna middle mouse click on that to copy it over. So now they're the same. That auto dirt removal's uh, bogging it down like crazy. This is the dedicated audio section. Last tab is deliver. So really, if you live in media, the very first tab edit to make your video timeline and then deliver. It'll be in great shape. You got all your settings, everything here. What I'm going to pick the same folder I had initially. Everything's in there. I'm going to give myself a version number so I can keep track of any changes I make. I'd recommend the MP4 export H.264 if you're going to YouTube. Um, and then you'd say add to render crew. The nice part about using this deliver page is let's say you've got four videos you want to export or this video and you want to do the full length video and then like five different short clips. You can say now I want this, I'm going to add that one. I want this section, I'm going to add that one. And then I want to do a section that has no audio. You can go through and you can make all those, you can add them all, name them all differently, add them all to the queue, and then you can select them all and render it. We'll just render everything in the queue. Otherwise, you can just add the one, click render, and it will render it out. All right, once you've done all that, then you can go to the Splendid YouTubes. If you haven't made a channel, make a channel, upload a video, select your file, um, and then you can fill all your stuff in. But the important part is that you need to make sure you have unlisted or public checked. And then the link, you can copy and paste the link and submit it in, on Tyrants Pro Whoopers website. That's it. Hit me up if you have any questions. I do video for a living, video production for a living. So I know probably too much about DaVinci and can ramble on about it for hours if I need to. <laughs>